Okay, car guys, got some old school stuff here for you. Years ago, you used to change your points and condenser, and that's what fired your ignition coil, and obviously your spark plugs. This is cool. This is an old Ford type, and you had to mount this in the distributor. If you notice, there's a little bit of, you can slide it left, right, adjust it. That's how you did it. Um, to adjust the dwell on this, you didn't use the dwell meter, you used the feeler gauge. And on the Ford ones, you'd lock this down and then crank the engine until you got the distributor on a high point. And when it opened these points, you would look for a 15 thousandths to 17 thousandths inch clearance between the point and the ground, as you can see right there, that little part. And that's how you got it to be close enough for your timing, you know, for your uh, dwell to be correct. Of course, here's a condenser, and that's what they would always say, points and condenser. This guy was actually plugged in right here on the contact with the uh, wire going to your coil. And every time these would open, this would make sure they didn't arc and pit. Well, it'd arc to an extent because that's what would wear them out. You know, you'd get 15, maybe 20,000 miles out of a good set of them, uh, even if this condenser was good. And sometimes these would fail and the points would pit and the thing would stop running right. And uh, that's just something you had to do routinely on the old cars. Now it's all electronic ignition. You don't even have a distributor anymore. This version here is the ones like we used to have in the General Motors cars. What was neat about it is you mounted it down, and then if you needed to adjust it, you just turned this uh, set screw here. Well, actually, it's a hex. Uh, you just put your Allen wrench in it and adjusted it, and you adjust it while the engine was running. You put a dwell meter across your coil uh, wire, and then it would tell you the dwell should have been on these at 30 degrees. And uh, it, all it does is move the whole point arrangement back and forth uh, to adjust the dwell on it. But anyway, just standard old points, you know. You didn't have to set the gap with a feeler gauge like you did on the Ford products, but that's just the difference in manufacturers. But um, these worked out real well. I could get, I don't know, 20-something thousand miles out of these, and uh, it worked out pretty well. And then, of course, we got one other item here. I bet you some of you know what this is. It's an A-track tape. It's got quarter-inch recording tape in it, and your music was on this guy. And the little silver thing you see here is a timing strip. What happens was, when this would cross, there were two contacts in the tape path. And when this would cross, this is what would change the track. It would move the heads up and down in the machine. And these actually had four sets of two tracks, consequently an A-track. And that's how you did stereo and stuff. And it has, I believe this was a 30-minute, you can kind of see the tape in there. I don't know if I can hold it up to the light. Yeah, you can see it in there. It's a continuous loop tape. It feeds from the center and winds around the outside of it. But this is what we had when you hear somebody say, oh, you have any 8-track tapes? Well, yeah, actually I do. These are unrecorded. I've got a 8-track recording machine back there in the back too. And that thing worked out pretty well. You can make your own tapes that way. And if you had, a, say, an album that was no longer produced or something and you wanted to put it on your tape, you could always record it on here. But uh, that's what an 8-track tape was. The original ones were 4-track, and they did not have the pinch roller inside. That's what this notch used to be. This used to be all cut out. And the 4-track machines actually had a, a movable pinch roller that would pop up out of the machine and go inside here. But these actually have a pinch roller inside. They have their own built-in little rubber pinch roller. And uh, that's how the thing... It, it would. It has. This goes into the cartridge machine pushes up against the capstan. The capstan grabs this pinch roller in your tape, pulls it across the heads. The music heads were in this section here and the track changing head was in here. It was actually just two metal strips that, that slide, well they slide across the tape. They were highly polished so they wouldn't wear the tape out. But once you hit this conductive foil, those guys would trigger the uh, mechanism to move the heads up and down. But anyway, a little bit of old school audio and old school electronics if you want to call it this is more like old school electrics but you know it's just old school stuff i think they still sell all this you can probably get it on rock auto someplace like that but anyway that's what we used to have to do to tune our cars thought you might want to see that 